You're listening to The Voluntary Life, where you can hear ideas for finding freedom in an unfree world. Visit thevoluntarylife.com to connect with the show and hear all past episodes. Here's your host, Jake. Hi, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This episode is part of a discussion that I had at Porkfest, which is the Free State Project's annual festival in New Hampshire. We went to uh, Porkfest this year. It was a lot of fun. And Brett Vernot, who runs the School Sucks podcast, kindly invited me to take part in uh, his presentation, which is about compulsory schooling and the effect that it has on people. And he asked me to come on to talk about overcoming the impact of compulsory schooling and uh, things that you can do to free yourself after school. And we have a discussion about entrepreneurship, which is what you're about to hear You can also listen to uh, Brett's full presentation and find a video uh, of our discussion in the show notes. Um, And I do recommend checking out Brett's podcast as well. And there are links to uh, all of those things in the show notes. So I hope you enjoy the discussion and thank you so much for listening. One of the things that school engenders is, is helplessness and dependence. And we wanted to move the discussion on to what happens after school and yeah, you can, uh, you on? Yeah, I'm okay. on. So what's the elevator speech for your podcast? Because we've been trying to work together for a while on this. Yeah, it's the perfect well, follow-up. Uh, so my podcast is, is really about ways of finding freedom in your own life. I'm particularly interested in entrepreneurship because that's my background. I've been an entrepreneur um, for a long time. But uh, I'm interested in what you can do, you know, to find more freedom in all aspects of life. So Uh, I I also do a lot of interviews with people um, who have uh, things to say on the subject. So, for example, in relation to your podcast, I've done a lot of uh, interviews with people who are unschooling uh, on that as an opportunity to find more uh, freedom uh, when you're raising your children for them uh, in terms of of their learning process. Um, But I think, um, yeah, anything to do with really actionable things that you can do to find freedom in your life, that's what The Voluntary Life is, is about. Yeah, and it seems like there's a lot of freedom that needs to be found. As I just go through the list of your shows, it's like freedom from this, freedom from that, all of these things that have trapped people and they've they've just been conditioned to be these dependents. So you have a list of a few things that you think are certainly skills that are undeveloped in school that we wanted to expand on a little bit today. Because what... I was trying to, what I was trying to deliver here with the story of, is what kids need is for people to get out of their way. And if you have to send your child to a public school, you might need to do, like people say, oh, well, that's lazy. I don't think it is because I think you might need to do more than um, maybe some homeschool parents or unschool parents do because you have to be involved in a different way. But your involvement, I don't think, should be with the student, right? Like, they don't need two arguments from authority coming at them. They don't need one person saying, oh, well, this is like the fake way it is, and then the parent saying, well, this is the real way it is. Uh, they just need to develop those skills for their own, but they're just turned into total intellectual dependence. What they need is for people to get the hell out of their way so they can develop these skills on their own. But I will say this, a little bit of practical advice. You do want to be more involved on the school end, I think. You want to earn this reputation, like back to the story of don't bother the teacher. You want to earn the reputation of the person who, the parent, who is going to make work for people at that school. That is their, from my experience, least favorite kind of person. And Lorette Lynn also had this story about how when she was uh, talking about how she wanted to send her kid to public school in Manhattan, she decided that two years before the kid would go there, she would go and interview the administrators. So she went in, she said, I got a kid coming here in a couple years, uh, what's going on? And the person just looked at her like, uh, she, it, it couldn't even believe it. It was like, I, I think you just fill out these forms. Right? I, I think you just do paperwork. I don't think I answer questions. So you don't want to... Uh, it's a mistake that I made when I was a teacher, like trying to say, okay, here, here's all the crap you've been told your whole life. Now here's the way it really is. And I was a liberal at the time, so I was pretty wrong about most of it. Um, 
but considering that people come out of these schools with this kind of dependence, what are some of the ways that you think are really important that they move towards more individual liberty? Yeah, I think, well, one of the things that um, comes to mind from, from what you were talking about is just how, I mean, you've talked about this on your show many times, how um, compulsory schooling really sets up a mentality of conformity and of preparing for a job. And, you know, the whole way that you're treated in school is the idea is that you have to, you know, do, jump through these hoops in order to show that you're able to be a responsible job person you know? yeah. and really you know what I think is the opposite end of that is is the opportunity that you have to work for yourself whether that's as um, you know in a kind of unjobbing situation where you're a freelancer and you're uh, getting income from many different sources or whether it's through entrepreneurship and I think you know one of the, the best things that you can do to try and overcome some of the sort of uh, legacy of being in school for that long is just to try it, just to actually get out there and, and do entrepreneurship as soon as you can, even if you're still in school, to just try and start your own business. Because it doesn't matter if, if you try 10 things and none of them actually make you any money, you're still going to learn a huge amount doing it. And it's a fantastic way to actually get some of the independence and some of the, you know, the real, uh, real learning uh, about you know taking your own life into your own hands and actually uh, reclaiming your independence in that way, or at least going through this. Because I mean, like entrepreneurs talk about living in their car, failing a bunch of times. Like, what better time to start if you have to be in school to start trying out some of these things, where you know you can at least learn from your mistakes, and maybe you don't, maybe you're not uh, an 18 year old millionaire, but you've uh, developed some independence or that will lead to eventually financial independence. Absolutely, yeah, because, I mean, you, you really, obviously people go and study um, MBAs and, and do this kind of thing to learn entrepreneurship, but actually I think that, that that is all really abstract and irrelevant compared to just doing it and going out and, and finding uh, an opportunity to provide value to other people. And when you're doing that, you know, you're really working for your own freedom. And you're, you know, you're, you're making one person uh, freer, which is yourself, but you're also providing value to others, which is, you know, that's a really revolutionary thing to do, to go out there and change the world through entrepreneurship by making the world a better place and providing something that, uh, that doesn't exist at the moment to people who are willing to pay for it and give you value uh, for the value that you're giving them. Now, that's a fantastic thing to learn. And it's actually the completely the opposite of what you learn um, in school because it's, about, it's all about you finding out for yourself and rather than you know, being told that you have su succeeded because you have passed various exams, reality will tell you whether you succeeded because you'll find out whether or not people are willing to pay for what it is that you're doing. Right. Now, you didn't go to public school. Or I what's did, yeah. I went, to, I went to a state school in the UK. Yeah. And, I mean, I, I went into higher education for a long time afterwards. I, I did a, a, an MSc and a PhD, so I know about being in the educational system. And it took me a long time to realize that, actually, uh, it's a lot more rewarding and a lot more fun to go out there and, and you know, start a business and provide value that way. Um, and I think that, you know, it, it really is a, a totally different, different life being out there doing entrepreneurship than being in education. The other thing I wanted to say was also that I think the other thing, just thinking of how you can deprogram yourself from, uh, from compulsory uh, education. The other thing that I think is really important is to get financial independence from your parents as soon as possible. Yes. That's something that when you've been in school... Um, and you, especially if you're looking to go to college, which is obviously the kind of typical ideal route that, you know, you want to get out of school and go to college and then you get a good degree and then you'll get a good job. You get in, into a situation, or many people do, where they, they're still financially dependent on their parents well into their adult lives. And it's kind of an extension of childhood in a way. And actually, there's a really interesting book uh, called The Millionaire Next Door where he talks about... Uh, some studies that he did of, of people who gained uh, financial independence from their parents earlier and later, and he compares their later incomes. And unsurprisingly, the people who become financially independent earlier 
end up making a lot more money because they actually have the experience of knowing what it is like to go out there and work for yourself or get a job if that's what you want to do or start a business. And I think, personally, I think that gives you a better relationship in your family as well because it means that you can, you know, as you grow up, you can have a relationship with your parents based on whatever, you know, value you get from, 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 and love you get from that relationship rather than because you're hanging around because they help you out with your mortgage on your first home or they help you out when you're, you know, when you need somewhere to go and stay and so forth. So I think that's another thing that, in a way, schooling doesn't really set you up for but actually is a part of, of growing up and being independent and the sooner you do it, uh, the more freedom you have. Yeah, you know, I think, and, and you were talking a little bit too about your, I don't know if you would chalk it up as a misstep of spending all this extra time in school. It sounds like you would a little bit. No, I, I actually had a great time. Um, I, I enjoyed it, but I do think it was a missed opportunity for having done entrepreneurship earlier. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, in that sense, that, that's definitely a missed opportunity. Because one of the things that I remember, and I remember first thinking about this at a very young age, um, or, or being aware of this idea, but it never really went away, was that life was something that will happen later, you know? And for a lot of people, I, I, it's sad, but it never really happens, you know? Like, really, uh, you know, working uh, some self-directed, finding real satisfaction in what they're doing, they just kind of continue to go through this maze. And for me, like, school, school was like, it was like shoveling snow, you know, like that was, it was that kind of activity. Like, I, I hate snow, I hate shoveling snow, but I need to get it the hell out of the way so I can actually go someplace. And um, that conditioning just lasts so long, it, it just becomes so programmed into us that I think a lot of people, yes, I, they want to go to 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th grade, and then is there a 17th and an 18th grade? I'll, I'll go there too, you know? And, and they just delay that inevitable of like getting out into the world, being on their own, um, because life is something that happens later. Absolutely. And there is the, you know, I guess you're so um, indoctrinated into the conformity that goes with that, that, you know, if you get good grades, then you somehow have achieved something. Yeah. Um, and, and that really, I think that takes your mind off all of the wonderful things that you can achieve in real life, you know. I mean, for example, another thing that um, school never even comes close to, to getting you to think about or, or sort of takes your mind off completely is, you know, some of the goals that you can have for having more freedom in your life. Like, for example, financial freedom. You know, when you go through the education system, you get set up for a situation where you're working in a job, you're making a wage, you have high taxes, you have high expenses to go with the kind of lifestyle that is the sort of, um, I guess, mainstream lifestyle. You take out a mortgage, you have lots of debt, and you're in this situation where even if you're earning good money, so many people are living paycheck to paycheck because that's sort of the, just the kind of typical career path that you get into. Whereas, you know, if you're interested in freedom, I think trying to find a way where you can get sources of passive income, where you can, you don't even necessarily have to have that much income if you have low expenses, where you can get to a point where you have financial freedom, where you can work on the things that really you love, that make you happy, rather than having to work a job in order to pay for that lifestyle that school really sets you up for. And do you, think, do you think that this would all be more... It seems like this would be more natural for people. Like, when I look at how a lot of kids are at six, seven years old, if, there, if no one had meddled, you know, so much in their lives, if they hadn't made it about, you know, you, what you should really do is please other people. Yeah, and work sucks, and it's in your way, but, yeah, but that's life. You know, that this, this would be a more natural progression, and it would happen faster for most people, instead of really, unfortunately, like never happening for most people. Like, what percentage of people are entrepreneurs? I would think it's relatively small. It's tiny, and yeah, I think it would be a natural progression, because when you think about it, if you're in school and you have a band, yeah. you know, that's sort of entrepreneurship. You, you get together with a group of friends, you try and get gigs, you know, normally you don't make that much money, but at least it's, it's a project, and entrepreneurship is just an extension of that kind of 
doing something that you love and doing something you're interested in project um, in adult life. And I think, yeah, the sooner you can start doing that, the more experience you can have to actually uh, get the freedom from doing it. And school does just get in the way of that. Yeah, and there was, a, there was a story about this, of a kid who wanted to drop out of school because he had all of these things that he wanted to do, and he was really talented. And all of this school stuff, it was just in the way. There was, there was, it was nothing for him to get, and it was only stopping him from achieving what he wanted to do. So he left. And um, I think that a lot of people never even realize that that's an option. You know, it is that there is that quiet resignation, like, oh, you know, too bad things are this way. Because if they weren't this way, I could really, you know, I could do what I wanted, I could be satisfied, I could be happy. That, I think that's the feeling for most people. Yeah, I mean, I, I had, um, I guess I was lucky that I had uh, somebody who I knew through my family who was an entrepreneur, who uh, I could sort of talk to about what he was doing and how he started his business, and I got a bit of an insight into it that way, but... I certainly never had any, any kind of um, uh, encounters with entrepreneurship at school whatsoever. You know, it's completely the opposite. Um, if you go to careers advice uh, at school, then they talk about what kind of job you want to have. And um, the idea of, of starting your own business doesn't really even come into it. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of bring it full circle with uh, my story about this boy, um, if parents do have to do, I mean, what, what's in the way of learning is uh, school and overbearing parents, in my opinion. Like, human beings uh, have a real desire to get contradictions and problems out of their way. And if you have to have your kids in school, I know it's an unfortunate situation, there's no way in hell that I can recommend it. But I do understand that things happen. The wife or husband who you, who's divorced is not on board, financial reason, you have a teenage kid who wants to go so they can have a boyfriend or a girlfriend. Don't become a part of the argument from authority. You know, like if kids have these, these natural gifts maintained, I mean, eventually what I realized is all I had to do for this boy who I accidentally meddled with one day was to be a cheerleader for the enthusiasm and the confidence and the creativity and curiosity that he already had. And he, um, you know, got into a habit, and I hope that habit continues, I don't work with him anymore, of setting goals for himself, and they could be small, they don't have to be big, they don't have to be big budget Lego animation movies with complex storylines like I want to make. It can just be the little goals along the way that he can find real satisfaction. And, um, you know, from my experience, I learned a lot about what my job should be. And I wanted to bring Jake up because I think we're both, uh, even though we like doing these podcasts, we're kind of hoping for a day where school sucks is not a shocking statement or a newsflash and the voluntary life is not some kind of novel or unheard of concept. So thank you very much for coming. If you have any questions, we'll take them. Come on up. That's not part of this presentation. I <laughs> uh, just wanted to share an experience. We've just finished uh, ushering our daughter through public education. And um, we had an interesting situation with her in the sense that uh, she would go to school. And she was bright. She was intelligent. She was articulate. She was forceful. She was her own thinker. And she was a troublemaker. Yeah. I got more calls from her principal than I did from her teachers. And it wasn't because of the fact that she couldn't do the work. She just simply decided to rebel against the whole concept. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it was a real hair puller for us. The problem was is I recognized myself in her in the sense that uh, I was the same way. I, I mean, I got C's in high school. And that's only because I just refused to do the work. They knew I knew the material. Uh, but the, the, the amount of peer pressure and the amount of pressure from the school to conform got to the point where literally they, we were in a situation where we got a phone call from the vice principal where they basically said, we have two choices. Uh, she can leave the school right now and we'll give her her diploma, but she needs to leave today. <laughs> or uh, we can try working through this, but she's probably going to be expelled. What would you like? And I said, well, give her the diploma. She doesn't need this. 
And How old was she? I'm sorry. Oh, well, she's 18. Okay. She's just graduated, thank God. And, uh, but the point of it is, is that she's come out of the school, and, and, we, and she didn't get an education. She got a, a, one long socialization experiment. And uh, whatever she's picked up, she's picked up on her own as far as I'm concerned. It, it just struck me that the school basically was teaching her how to conform, and that was about it. And hopefully she'll grow out of whatever it is that they try to indoctrinate her with. And did you feel like there was anything that you had to do along the way? Because, you know, as far but were you more focused on dealing with administrators and you said teachers or whatever, but... Um, how about with her? I mean, was there any, if you don't mind sharing, was there any? Yeah. Like well, now that the experience is over with, I, I was always conflicted through the whole thing. Uh, again, because with my own experience, you know, uh, basically the teachers just wanted me to shut up and do the work. And that just simply wasn't the way I was brought up. But at the same time, the amount of peer pressure for me as a parent, I mean, quite literally, I was treated as an abusive parent because I wasn't as shocked and aghast by her behavior as the administration was. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And I've, I've heard that, that this is, uh, you know, kids being taken away from their parents for homeschooling, stuff like that. It's, in, it's interesting that it's almost the opposite that's really true, that uh, I think if you've understood a lot of these ideas for some time, that probably translated pretty well into parenting and then into her thinking. It was, well, I would hope so. I mean, again, I mean, I had to play the role of parent. You know, it, this is all you need to do in order to accomplish the end. We literally sat down and we said, all right, what is it that they're presenting? What do you know? Where are your grades coming from? Where are these discipline issues coming from? And primarily, it was just simply she wasn't going to conform. Right. And it's like, okay, well, here are, here are your choices. You know, this is what you're confronted with. You make your choices. And, you know, we would like for you to get through high school, get your diploma, and move on with life. But at the same time, she has to deal with it on a daily basis. Well, and I think if any kid comes from an environment of, you know, rational, peaceful, enlightened <laughs> parenting, uh, the, the real messages of school just don't stick. Like this provisional self-esteem, like your good when we tell you that you are, when mm -hmm. you please us, the confusion, the dependence, the conformity, the obedience, uh, the collectivism, never, it never really takes hold. Like I would think that if a child was raised in that environment, school would just seem like a, like a Saturday Night Live skit or something, you know, just completely foolish, mm -hmm. like a parody of pretty much adult society. Right. Um, but... Kids don't speak. Kids who are raised in that environment don't speak that language. Right. You know, so it's just it's amusing. Right. It's it, not it, it's not crushing like it is for kids who are not prepared mm -hmm. at home to uh, have the intellectual self defense they need to deal with that environment. Well, the thing of it is that they talked about critical thinking and being your own person and being responsible for your own time. And then when someone actually demonstrated independent thinking, critical thinking, and being independent, right. they become troublemakers. Meanwhile, students who basically learn to conform and do very little else are, are basically rewarded by the system. Absolutely. So thank you very much thank for you. sharing. I really appreciate that. This gentleman is Alec. Alec? You can applaud for him. You can applaud for these. <laughs> Not enough applause. Where was all the applause? Nice. How you doing? I'm doing great. I want to say I'm a longtime fan of School Sucks podcast, and I would highly recommend checking it out. And I have not heard of Voluntary Life, and I'm very excited uh, to hear about what you're talking about. Is that correct, Voluntary Life? Yes, thevoluntarylife.com. Thevoluntarylife.com. Uh, couldn't, uh, couldn't say more good things about entrepreneurship. And I just wanted to say a quick thing myself. Fear prevented me from starting my own business for the longest time and a couple of years ago I finally sucked it up and took the risk and I figured out how to make it work for myself. In your opinion, what are the biggest barriers to entrepreneurship? What are the hurdles that people uh, have the most trouble overcoming? Uh, fear being mine, everybody else is different I'm sure. Well, I mean I really understand the fear, um, especially because as we've been talking about it's so alien the idea of entrepreneurship to schooling and to the messages that you receive in school 
So I totally understand that. And I think one of the other things to say about barriers is just that obviously the more responsibilities that you have and the more you have, well, especially financial responsibilities, the harder it is to have the opportunity to start a new business and to really um, you know, take the opportunity to, to, to set something up. That's why I think it's really um, important to talk about trying entrepreneurship, if you can, when, as, as young as possible. Because if you have kids, if you have a mortgage, if you have a, a lot of expenses, then you know, the risk of having income that's uncertain during that early period is, is a real problem. It's really difficult. Um, so I think that can be a barrier. The more responsibilities you've already taken on, in particular debt. You know, if you if you have a lot of debt or you have a um, um, mortgage debt and so forth, then you you kind of you can be in a situation where you feel like, well, I've got to stay in this job to pay for the expenses that I've got to keep everything going. So I think I see that as one of the the real barriers that that people that people perceive to entrepreneurship. Um, you know, obviously. There's, there's ways of approaching that too, but I guess the main thing I would say from that is to, to really take the opportunity um, when you don't have a lot of financial uh, obligations to just go for it. Um, because worst case scenario, as long as you're not sinking uh, a huge amount uh, uh, early on, if it's the kind of business where you need big capital investment, that's maybe a different matter. But you know, the worst thing that can happen is that you learn a huge amount through the process, and, uh, and that in itself is really valuable. That's worth more than, um, you know, than doing an MBA. Um, but I, I think that the, if you do have a lot of debt um, and a lot of financial obligations, then it's worth thinking about how you can reduce your expenditure and how you can make yourself um, have less pressure to continue staying in a job. Um, before you are, are able to really um, to do entrepreneurship. That would be what I think is one of the main barriers. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Alec. And we got time maybe for one or two more. Uh, I'm actually in high school right now. Okay. Uh, and I've actually been basically an entrepreneur since I was like 13 or so. I've been fixing computers. Um, and I think... It's really true if you um, ask most high schoolers, like, how do you feel about work? It's really, like, something they want to get out of the way. They don't want to be, like, a producer. They want to, you know, sit around this, like, it's a, like, hindrance to them. And if you ask them, like, oh, you know, do you have, like, a job? They're like, well, they don't want to get the job until they have to. It's like, they don't want to be an adult. They want to be a kid, and like they feel like they're a kid their whole life, or at least you know as far as they've been. And it's like there's no like it's very abstract how they get from being like a kid in school to being grown up. Like in Maine, where I'm from, uh, the governor just endorsed one school for saying um, like having an optional fifth year for students. So the governor is actually saying like, hey, kids, go to school for another year. You know, put off entering the job market even further. Yeah. And, it, and it's just like they're trying to put them back and say, like, no, you can't, you know, you have to just keep doing the same thing and not advance, not, you know, learn your own things. It's just, it's absurd. The whole thing. So when you talk about, you know, doing these things that are entrepreneurial, did you get any pushback from parents, from anyone at the, any authority figures that you talk to about doing this? Like, I really didn't talk to people about doing it. I just wanted to do it. I mean, like, my parents were very supportive of it. Um, my dad's pretty much a libertarian. My mom's pretty much one as well, although she's more, you know, a left-leaning libertarian. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they've been very supportive of it all. Uh, they give me rides um, if I'm going f f longer distances. Um, and, you know, so that's been pretty helpful. I think the some of the, t like, school people that I have talked to about it um, have been a little... Um, questioning of, you know, whether that's good. I mean, I've, I do very well in school anyway, so I can always say, well, you know, my grades are good, so just leave me alone. <laughs> yeah, you know, I wonder, and I, maybe it's a little different for everybody, is it sort of this Michael Jackson syndrome of, I never had a childhood, so I want to be one, I want to find every opportunity I can have to be one as long as possible, or is it just like there is so much encouragement in the schools 
to not mature uh, emotionally, as far as independence, really intellectually, financially, any of these things that we're, we're talking about? What do you think? Well, I, I think that, um, like, because they won't give the kids the independence, yeah. the kids can't feel independent. So they just, they're stuck in this, like, mindset where, you know, if people aren't giving them the freedom to do what they want, they're not giving them the encouragement to go out and, you know, do something they love, they don't feel like they're allowed to. They don't feel like they're able to. They're not willing to take that first step of just just do it. You know, like, you, you can't just ask. If you, if you just spend your whole life asking permission, if you're able to start your business or whatever, you're, you're just going to be way behind everybody who just does it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to say, by the way, I, I think that's awesome what you're doing. That's fantastic. And there is an interview on, on my podcast with a guy um, who started out fixing computers in school, and he went on to found a whole series of businesses, and it's quite a fun interview. Um, so uh, check it out. It's called yeah. um, Successful Entrepreneurship uh, on the podcast. But he started doing exactly what you're doing in school as well. So, yeah, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, and I think also one of the reasons that, that maybe uh, that comes to mind for me why some people, well, why you, what you're experiencing with a lot of people saying, oh, I don't really want to work and it's a pain in the ass is because it is. I mean, it can be stressful, it can be difficult, and there are um, benefits from using school as a time where you kind of just switch off your brain. I mean, a lot of people, that, that's sort of what school encourages, and it's very easy to do. And so I think seeing entrepreneurship and as, a, as a, a stressful hassle and a waste of time is something that is, fits very easily with the mindset that you get at school. And it's only if you can see that it's actually an opportunity to get more freedom and to get more um, opportunity for yourself that you can, in a sense, overcome that. So I think it's great. Congratulations. Thanks. And what was your name? Uh, my name is William. William, thank you very much for sharing that with us. And uh, was there one more thing you wanted to say? Well, yeah, I think I was very lucky because I was actually homeschooled until eighth grade, I guess, or yeah, eighth grade. Um, and that's right about that year, the last year or the year before when I was homeschooled was when I started working on computers like... Um, for money, yeah, um, and it, and then I actually said to my mom like I want to go to um, you know public school because like I didn't do sports I didn't really do any like quote unquote extracurricular activities from the school so I didn't have a chance to meet anyone my age I was feeling lonely now I was able to bring the same mindset of homeschooling kind of into my school life yeah um, which I think has helped a lot but. I couldn't imagine starting out in public school. Um, I have a sister who went much earlier than I, and it's very interesting to see how she is different there. Yeah, I would think if you had been a self-teacher for you know the first several years before going to high school would be kind of hilarious. <laughs> but um, I'll tell you what, live shows on Thursday night, if you want to come up and do a segment with us, that would be absolutely fantastic. I'd love to have you. We have to get off stage for the next event. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thank you for listening to The Voluntary Life. If you have feedback about the show, please email jake at thevoluntarylife.com. If you enjoyed this program, please share the podcast with your friends or click the donate button on thevoluntarylife.com.